LGBTQ comedian in the world. Okay, so today we have the rare treat of a trans man taking time out of his day to show his ass. And I know it's usually trans women that have this job, but today it was his turn. It was hosted by Jubilee, and the title was One Republican versus 25 Kamala Voters. Ben Shapiro happened to be the one Republican, so Ben Shapiro basically doing a special guest type situation for Jubilee. So what happened was, was, there was this trans man by the name of Shane that I recognized from another Jubilee video. Putting all of these barriers just for them to be able to go to the restroom, which is a natural thing that we all have to do. So what do I need to do? Piss outside? Which was the one where Blair White, keep it cute girl, keep it real cute was against the liberal and I know there were others that were on with Blair White but Blair White made the biggest splash on that video because they really attacked her they went after her it was the one with Blossom she did call me ugly and this guy Shane he's also a trans activist in case you guys didn't know and also that one guy Alexander the non-binary man that wore the rolled up condom on his head when I say men I mean men so the way that the show works is Ben Shapiro is sitting at a table the moderator put up one of Ben Shapiro's claims. Then they sound off a buzzer. Once the buzzer goes off, then the potential debaters all run to the opposite side of the table where there's another chair. And the first one to actually make it to the chair is the one that's gonna be able to debate Ben for a bit. So we get about 35 minutes in. And the claim that they're supposed to debate is Kamala Harris's extreme pro-abortion stance is morally indefensible. And that's when this trans man Shane decides to make his big play for it. And obviously when he sat down initially, Ben has no idea that this is a trans man he's talking to. Or maybe he's just being polite enough to pretend that he doesn't know it's a trans man he's talking to. So we're going to watch the clip of his interaction with Ben Shapiro. I'm going to tell you guys what I think about it. If you guys want to watch it completely uninterrupted, I will put the link to the full video by Jubilee down below in the description box and you can check it out there. The the full video itself is an hour and 40 minutes, but we're not watching the full thing. And then at the end of the video, I'll tell you why I think it's actually a good thing that this guy Shane did what he did. So let's get into it. But before we go any further, do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to leave a comment just to help me on the algorithm, but you don't know what to comment, just put, I can't believe you would say this, or some variation of that. That way if people come by the video and they see the comments and just see a bunch of people saying, I can't believe you would say that, they'll be like, what did he say? And if we all know me, I will say something that will fit those comments. I'm a transgender man. Okay. <gasps> By the way, your hips had already told us. You know my hips don't lie. I wonder if Shakira was looking at a trans man when she wrote hips don't lie. I've experienced essay. All right, I'm gonna come right out and say it. I've been holding it in for too long. Trans men transitioning because of SA trauma is their equivalent of AGP. If you guys aren't familiar with AGP, it stands for autogynophile. That is when trans women enjoy dressing as women because it's a fetish. And I have been thinking about this for quite a while because I've noticed that a lot of trans men, so biological females, seem to end up transitioning to present themselves as men as a response to trauma from SA. I've noticed this a lot now and it's kind of weird but at the same time it makes sense that the sexes would do it for the opposite reason. Autogynophiles do it to feel sexy and trans men do it basically to lose their sex appeal to actual men by looking like a man. So for one side, it's a fetish and the other side, it's a defense mechanism, which is very stereotypically male and female. This is why it's important that people don't lie to themselves because you're mistaking yourself for being mad at Ben Shapiro because the abortion debate reminds you that you aren't really a man. Um. 
And all jokes aside, I think it's terrible that he got essayed. I'm not trying to make light of that situation in any way, and I'm not trying to make anybody mad, but I personally do believe that a woman should be able to decide what she does with her body. But as far as this guy goes, this issue just really reminds him that no matter who says what, biology is biology and he is still a female. And when I see people like this talk, I really do understand what some people are saying when they say that we shouldn't use preferred pronouns and we should just call people by what they biologically are and I'm not going to stop respecting the preferred pronouns of people that I know that are very much reality based and polite because the trans people that are reality based and polite know that this is just something that we do as a courtesy and don't actually believe that they are the opposite sex like this particular person does and when it comes to these particular people they should have everybody around them address them in the pronouns that actually do coincide with their biological sex. Because if you've gotten to the point where you've convinced yourself that you actually are something that you are not, and you buy into that to the point where you're upset with other people for acknowledging the reality of what you are in a completely non-disrespectful way, just matter of fact during debate, and you're the one that even brought it up. Otherwise, Ben Shapiro would just be talking to you like you're a man. But you brought it up and now you're trying to pin it on Ben Shapiro that he's hateful because I don't even know what because he really hasn't been able to say anything. The only things he said were just the facts so that you guys could start the debate. But instead of doing the debate, it seems like you're just trying to vent. See, and he's still acting like he did an Uno reverse on Ben, but that hasn't been what Ben's doing on the episode so far. If you watch the original video yourself, you'll see that he's debated several people and they're sticking to the topics. Well, there's a few that have kind of veered off, but it hasn't been Ben that was the one veering off. It's like some of these kids, because some of them are on the younger side, you can tell. And respect to all of them, because I know when you're on TV, if you're not you, to it you can freeze up a little bit from that too and then you're debating against somebody that you've probably seen debate quite a bit on YouTube so you're probably a little intimidated by the fact that you're sitting across from Ben Shapiro so I'm not gonna clown anybody for the most part, everybody's been doing well. But this guy, I think, came in not only really emotional, but also being intimidated by the idea of going up against Ben Shapiro. So he knew that he couldn't debate him on the actual issues. So instead, he just decided to go straight emotion, like a typical woman. Don't get mad at me, I'm just trying to have a little fun. Basically, he pivoted from black trans women to talking about how trans people are 1% of the population. And I really do take issue with him trying to act like there is a disproportionate amount of attention being paid to the trans community when he and the other trans activists want us to act like the trans community is the most important thing in the world. Nobody would be focusing on the trans community if you weren't always asking us to focus on the trans community because really that's what's happening in a lot of these cases. It does start off with you telling us check this out and then we look into it and we notice what it's about and we're like yeah that's not something we're gonna help you out with so stop making it seem like we are supposed to not only pay attention to the trans community like it's the most important thing in the world but turn a blind eye when we notice things that we don't think should be happening in any community because I don't know a single community outside of the trans community that's trying to unnecessarily medicate and medicalize my Never heard of a glass cliff situation, so I actually had to look that one up. I'll tell you guys what it is just in case anybody doesn't know. The glass cliff is a hypothesized phenomenon in which women are more likely to break the glass ceiling, i.e. achieve leadership roles in business and government during periods of crisis or downturn when the risk of failure is highest. Other research has expanded the definition of the glass cliff phenomenon to include racial and ethnic minority groups. And yeah, sometimes that's when you get your shot. And if we're being 100% honest, Kamala wasn't going to get her shot at being the actual president any other way. In case you don't remember, she ran a campaign in 2020 and she called it off herself because she said that her campaign didn't have the funds to continue on. Also, she's not exactly popular as vice president. A lot of people that are voting for her are only voting for her because she's not Donald Trump. 
So she better be happy if she gets the honor of glass cliffing her way into the presidency. I mean, if she gets elected and even if she fails miserably and is a horrible president, she will go down in history as the first female president of the United States of America, which is a pretty big distinction. So... Sometimes you got to take your shot. You guys, earlier the patriarchy would come into play. It's always the patriarchy with these people. And all the violence that men perpetuate. Okay, if men are so terrible, why do you want to be one so badly? Why do you want to be a man to the point where you'll get offended if people misgender you and don't know that you are supposed to be a man? This is what gets me about some of these people. You really, really want to be what you claim is one of the worst things in the world, especially this person specifically because this person started off as a white woman so if you believe that they can transition which like I said we all just humor the idea of transition but let's go with that premise if you believe that they can transition then a white woman becomes a white man and this person I believe dates women so that would make him a heterosexual white man. And according to these people, there is nothing worse in this world than a, a heterosexual white man. So if men are so terrible, why are you so anxious to get into the club? And I think what this person doesn't realize because he isn't really a man is he's trying to do an impression of the worst kind of man, which is the guy that thinks he's an alpha, but really is a beta. Like he thinks he's doing alpha moves right now. He thinks this is really asserting dominance and letting you know how manly and how masculine he is. But if he were a real guy, he'd just be a fat beta. And I'm not even saying that to be insulting or fat shame or anything like that. But that's the way guys see guys like this. Like the fat guy that's just trying to be loud and annoying for no reason and overbearing and nobody's afraid of him because size is all he's got and you know that he can't actually defend himself. Like you look at this guy, even if you were a straight guy, you would know that he's the kind of guy that you could easily push around if you wanted to. You could give this guy a wedgie and there's nothing he would do about it. So even though he thinks he's doing an impression of an alpha, he really is a true beta. And so while you may in reality be a catch in the lesbian world, if you're a real man, you'd be the shittiest version of one. And all of this idea that abortion is somehow gonna solve it all. I don't think anybody thinks that stopping or allowing abortion is going to be the fix all for this country. But again, he's working a false premise to make a point that's not being made in this debate. By forcing women to have abortion instead of focus on the real problems that we're facing in our society. Okay, he's so angry right now that he lost the plot and he phrased it the wrong way. I know what he's trying to say, but he phrased it to where he's making it seem like Republicans want to force women to have abortions. So when he says that, it just shows... I find him saying this to be very ironic because this is something that I'm always complaining about, that the trans activists make the everyday person think that they hate actual trans people because the trans activists really have taken over that entire movement and they make everyday trans people look bad. When it comes to the gay community, we also suffer consequences because of the rhetoric that you're putting out every day. And these are supposed to be the activists from our community if you still believe in the LGBTQ community. So you are supposed to be spokespeople for our community or more specifically the trans community and you're making the world think that they hate us and you're making it so we have fewer and fewer rights. So this is definitely where he needs to look in the mirror because there is a lot of projection happening right now. And including my entire community and the intersectionalities of black women. That's the other one. These people love to talk about intersectionality. Ladies Ladies and gentlemen, mark off intersectionality on your SJW bingo card. Patriarchy and intersectionality. She really is breaking out all the hits right now. Men that experience SA, trans. Okay, so now we're at Trump. After you have accused him repeatedly of jumping all over the place, you are jumping all over the place. What we are actually talking about right now is Kamala's stance on abortion. That's what we were originally talking about. You've taken it from abortion to trans men existing to black trans women to intersectionality to SA. And now we finally get to what you wanted to talk about from the beginning. You suffer 
suffer from TDS more than you suffer from gender dysphoria or anything else. This is what you wanted to talk about all along. This is what you're so angry about is the fact that he's voting for Trump. But I'm sure if we were to bring up Joe Biden and the accusations that people ended up finding out when they read his daughter's diary, or if we were talking about any of the Bill Clinton allegations, you'd clam up. I would at least respect your argument and the people like you if you all would address that as well. If you would address that, then at least I think you're honest. But the fact that you don't ever address Biden or Clinton, Clinton's got a bunch of allegations going back years and years and years. But you wouldn't bring that up, would you? Like you have children. How could you? He ends it by doing again an 80s teen movie villain move by putting his hand out and saying, pleasure to meet you, dick and then pulling his hand away and Ben Shapiro didn't go for the handshake anyway so he really didn't even do that right I swear this guy is just a series of misses like nothing he's doing actually hits but I'm sure in his head he's like "Ooh, I got him and it's like no you really didn't you made yourself look really really stupid you are so dumb you are really dumb for real and I really feel like he should have sincerely put his hand out and shook Ben Shapiro's hand if Ben Shapiro would even take the handshake just because Ben Shapiro was a good sport in allowing him to just vent. Because if you think that Ben Shapiro doesn't have enough money that whatever they paid him to be there, because I'm sure they gave him something to be there. Jubilee does make a lot of money, so I'm sure they gave him some sort of appearance fee. But whatever they were paying him, if he had just at a point gotten up and been like I'm gonna get out of here I'm not listening to this guy or if he had asked them to just get you out of there maybe it would have looked bad but he could have got just as many clicks doing that and they would have got just as many viewers from watching your ass getting ejected because you had offended Ben Shapiro but Again, I know that's not Ben Shapiro's style, and I really do respect that about him. I don't always agree with everything he says. There are times when I really don't agree with what Ben Shapiro says, but I do respect him as a debater, and I do respect the way that he's actually able to retain information and spit it out when he needs to, and I do respect what he's done with his own media company, The Daily Wire. I know him and Candace Owens had their thing, and that's controversy, but I only know so much about that anyway because it's not something I really focused in on. But Ben Shapiro, as far as I go, is a pretty impressive character, even to put himself out for this kind of thing, because like I said, he makes enough money that I'm sure he didn't have to do this, whatever they offered to pay him. He could have just said no, and instead he went ahead and did it, and it was with a bunch of people that, I mean, there were a couple of guys that were really good, like as far as going back and forth with him and stuff like that. So that was interesting to watch, but then like I said, there were some people that kind of choked, or some people that really didn't have a point or weren't very well versed and I'm not trying to be shady about that but they just weren't but I am happy that this trans man had this meltdown because things like this will let a lot of America see what it is we're dealing with not only in the community but also if you're online dealing with trans activists and the way that these people have deluded themselves into believing that the world is a way that it's not because of these unquestionable questioned echo chambers that they live in where he is actually a man and he's the same as a genetic male and trans women in their world are the same as biological females. This is not reality and when you have people that are living in these unquestioned echo chambers, they really do get themselves to the point where reality is offensive and not only is reality offensive, it's discriminatory and hateful and everybody needs to suffer a consequence because of it. And a lot of times what they'll do is instead of saying your exact words because they know that if they use your exact words, the average person is gonna be like, yeah, I don't know what the lie is or why we're supposed to be mad at that person. So instead they'll just say that you are transphobic and they'll paint it to be a way that it wasn't. So they've been able to basically gaslight their way into power or as much power as they could possibly have in their positions, which has been a lot of power over society. And it's made it so we're not able to debate things like medically transitioning
partners or trans women in female sports, or even just acknowledge that there are biological differences between males and females. I mean, all of these very basic things we haven't been able to discuss because a very small part of the population refuses to live in reality. And so having this exposed on such a huge level, because it's already reached 6 million people or it's already got 6 million views. So that's quite a few people that actually are seeing that. And it does show you that because of the way that these people are living and because they're all just feeding each other these lies, they're also not even capable of having actual discussions about these things because the minute they have an honest discussion with somebody that is living in reality, their entire rationale is going to be blown apart because it just doesn't hold up to the world we actually live in. And one more time, I want to be very clear about the fact that this is not everyday trans people and these people are not representative of everyday trans people. These people are activists and this is their job, which in some ways is even scarier because that is what they're actually in charge of is leading and speaking for actual trans people. And instead of being a good representation of that, they make it seem like all trans people are crazy. So I'm glad that he inadvertently exposed himself and others by doing this video and I hope that more and more people will see it and more and more people will have the strength to just stand up to it already because why should the minority of the minority of the minority be in charge of all of us even though They've never been elected to office and we didn't decide that they were going to be in charge of us in any democratic way. They just somehow ended up running a lot to do with the culture in this country for the last 10 years at least. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. As always, this has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. They bought into his bullshit. Mm -hmm.